Today, I wanted to talk to you about some of the challenges that our large enterprise customers in the retail industry are experiencing with regards to tracking their supply chain. Traditional supply chain management applications only allow for interactions between the retailer and the supplier. Beyond that, the retailer has no visibility. So once an order gets created in these applications, you only wait for updates from the supplier on where this product's, on what the product status is. With Oracle's blockchain cloud service, we are going steps beyond that and providing retailers end-to-end -end visibility from not just creating the purchase order, but once the supplier receives the purchase order and sends it out to the manufacturing plant, when the manufacturing plant finishes production and then sends it out to the customs agent, after which it goes to the distributor and all the way to the customer's hand. So we want to be able to track all of that. And with Oracle's blockchain cloud service, we have enabled that capability for not just the retailer, but also for the customer. Let me show you in a few uh, quick steps how that can be achieved. So let's start at step one. The first step in this process is creating the purchase order. So the procurement manager, once logging in, they'll go to procurement, they'll create the purchase order, and then that will be sent out to the supplier. As soon as that is done, that gets recorded in the blockchain network, and that becomes the first originating point of entry. We're now going to show you how once the purchase order is received by the supplier, how the transactions from there on in are also recorded into the blockchain network. So we have seen that retailer has created a purchase order and passed it on to the supplier. So as a manufacturing agent, they can log in and they can check the purchase order details and create product against it. So here are the details for the purchase order, which says supplier, order number, and for the details. So once they click on next, the details will get saved onto the blockchain. And after that, you can create the product, like specifying the product name, product ID, product material, brand, color, manufactured location, and the manufactured date. And once you click on create product, these details will also get saved onto the blockchain network. So once your product is successfully created, you can see your product details in the product list. Along with it, there'll be a transfer button. So once you have created your product in production, you can transfer it to customs. So for customs, you need to enter the type of shipment, quantity, mode of transportation, name of transportation agency, and the location to whom you want to transfer. So once you have done, done that, your product will get transferred to the customs. Now customs can see the product and can review them for approval or for the rejection process. The rejection or approval process will get saved onto the blockchain network. So once they have approved the products, they can actually transfer it to the distributor. So now distribution center has received the product, they can see the details of the product from the manufacturer end, and they can transfer the product to particular retail stores. Now the retail stores can see the product in their inventory and whenever a consumer come, customer come to buy that product, they can link that consumer with the specific product ID. So as a customer, now I want to buy something from the retailer. So I go to the retailer store, I want to know where this product was made. For example, let's say I want to buy handbags. So I go in, I open up my app and I scan this product. Once I scan the product, I can now see where this product was made, when this product was brought into my country, and from there on in, when it came to the store. So blockchain is tracking all of that, so that way I have a peace of mind that this product is authentic. It was created in one of the actual manufacturer's plant, and it came to the store as advertised. So let's take a look at a high-level notional architecture of our solution and see what Oracle components were used. So we used Oracle's ERP cloud service in the procurement module for the retail supply chain officer to place the purchase order to the supplier. Then we used Oracle's integration cloud for these purchase orders to integrate with the blockchain cloud services to integrate all the different third-party applications that were used for the supplier persona, the customs persona, and the distributors. And then finally, we used Oracle's mobile cloud service, which is also integrating with Oracle Integration Cloud to talk to blockchain cloud service that the customer is using to scan the product and view product history. With Oracle's blockchain cloud service, not only am I getting end-to-end -end visibility as a procurement manager working for this retail company, but also as a consumer of the products of this retail company, I'm getting complete transparency into the entire supply chain of this product. 